I'm Mick and this is Sally. In our videos we hope to showcase what Australia has to offer. You can follow us on our adventures via the following social media platforms. If you like the video please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Morning everyone, it's uh, Sunday morning and Sally and I are down on the Fleurieu Peninsula having a bit of a drive around. We had our 43rd wedding anniversary on uh, the 15th earlier in this week so we thought we'd come for a bit of a drive. We normally do on our anniversary, we go somewhere and have a bit of a celebration so this is it. No caravan in tow yet because we've still got no Colorado, it's been five weeks and uh, that's at least another one so there's six, possibly one after that, that'll be seven so Hopefully we'll have that back soon and then we can get back on the road with the van. So a bit of a look around the Fleurio Peninsula, so I hope you enjoy what you see. It was a gloomy day on the Saturday afternoon when we left Adelaide, but we weren't going to let that uh, spoil our fun. So first stop that we had a look at was the Maiponga Reservoir. And there's not too many reservoirs in South Australia that you can drive over the damn wall, but this is one of them that you can. It's nice to see water going down the spillway after the wet season that we've had. From the reservoir lookout, it was back over the dam wall again to continue our trip south into the Fleurio Peninsula. The forecast for the next couple of days was intermittent showers, windy and uh, cold, but we weren't going to let that deter us and uh, as you can see here blue skies one moment and rain the next but uh, no it looked like it was going to be okay. Now pulling into the memorial for the Hobart which was an ex uh, warship and that was sunk in 2002 and set up as a dive site. Our next stop along the way as we head south was Second Valley and uh, here we're going to go down and have a quick look at the jetty. As one would expect on a day like today, not very many people down here but uh, it was certainly rough seas, there was no doubt about that. The rain and the clouds, they came and went all day, but the wind was relentless, it just kept blowing all day. Like most ocean waters, on a calm day, with the sun shining, these waters can look a very pretty blue. As the showers continued to come and go, we made our way down to Rapid Bay. There's a reasonably steep descent going down into Rapid Bay, but uh, I guess with a bit of care with a caravan on the back, everyone does it and there's no issues. I've never heard of any accidents where people have run out of brakes at the bottom, but we're now coming along the coast here as we head up towards the new Rapid Bay jetty.
As we come back from the jetty, we do a left-hand turn here and head into the campground. And uh, this is quite a very uh, large campground and it's all grass. Now this campground has beachfront um, sites and uh, as I say it is large, there's no facilities here in the way of uh, electricity or water so you need to be self-sufficient in that regard. With the campground located at a beach like this, it's extremely popular during the summer months. With the rain appearing as though it was going to give us a bit of a break, we continued our journey south to Cape Jervis. Just before you go down into Cape Jervis, there is a lookout and that allows you to have a bird's eye view of the lighthouse there as you can see. And as we go further around, you'll see the ferry terminal that takes you across the Kangaroo Island. It certainly was a rough day when we were down there out on the water, but with the break walls that they've got set up here around the ferry terminal, it's certainly calm inside where they've got the ship anchored. There certainly were some big uh, waves rolling in against the break wall here, but uh, I couldn't quite catch them with the camera, but uh, trust me, they were huge. Bit of a slow retreat from the rock climb here, otherwise I would have slipped over with wet feet. Leaving Cape Jervis, we now started to make our way over towards Victor Harbour, and at this stage we wondered where the time went as uh, the afternoon was now getting on. On a perfect summer's day, with the sun shining and no wind, this can be a very pretty drive as we descend down the hill to come down into Victor Harbour. It was our original intention to find a motel here in Victor Harbour and uh, stay the night here before we continued on with tomorrow, but unbeknownst to us there was a, mu a music festival being held in the town, so everything was booked out. So we had to make our way over to Strathalbyn, that was the closest place that we could locate a motel room and uh, as it turned out we got the last one that was available. After leaving Strathalbyn we made our way down to Malang and uh, this is a very pretty town this one. We have stayed here before in the caravan and uh, Spent a few nights in the caravan park, which is down by the lake, but no, there's such big open areas of green lawns, it's a very pretty spot. The weather this morning was certainly an improvement on yesterday. Um, blue skies everywhere just about. And uh, there was still a little bit of wind, but not quite as strong, but certainly made it nice for walking around. There's so much history related to these small communities on these waterways, whether it be down here or up in the River Murray or the Darling, anywhere like that. It must be a history writer's paradise to be able to capture so much and put it to words. so nice to see the water up at the level that it is at the moment. It was such a sad state back in the drought when all these shacks here were dry, there was nothing in front of them. The old railway station at Malang. Oh, this is one place I've got to go and see when we come back with the caravan. I reckon this would be a great place to 
talk to people and read the history about what used to happen down this way with the railways. There is quite an array of railroad uh, memorabilia restored here and uh, yeah I just reckon it'd be great to be able to walk around and have a real good look when it's all open to the public. To have such a great display and the entry to be free, to me that's amazing. To see the canola crops all out in flower, it's such a beautiful sight to see with the sun on them in the September period. And then to have them sitting alongside, or growing alongside I should say, uh, green wheat crops, the contrasting colours certainly makes it very pretty to look at. There were certainly some nice crops on the Flurio Peninsula and of course the canola was no exception. As we were making our way to Gulwa, um, we come across the Finnis River and uh, that was flooded and the road was closed unbeknownst to us but oh, what a very pretty sight. This reminds me of Kakadu in the Northern Territory and uh, with the flooded uh, low-lying areas out alongside the Finnis, it was very pretty to look at. Coming into view now, on the left-hand upper part of the screen, you can see the white posts of the highway road there. That's the main road as it crosses over or follows through to the uh, Finnis River. I'm not sure how deep the water was going over the road here. Um, the depth post marker there, got a lot of light shining back on as I'm coming in with the drone, but I think it was about a half a metre deep. Now, with the amount of water laying around, I would imagine it's going to be some time before the road's open. It was very windy conditions to be flying the drone and uh, believe me with my recent history of crashes and everything else with it, I was very cautious with it on this trip. With the road being shut due to the flooding, it was a quick detour to come around to the town of Finnis and uh, we were soon on our way. The dirt road didn't last for very long at all. Once we arrived here at Gulwa, uh, it was a very late uh, breakfast, so that really became brunch for us, and uh, we had that before we continued on our way. We took a quick trip over the Hindmarsh Island Bridge, and had it been a nicer day with no wind and the showers not continuing to come through, we probably would have gone on to the Murray Mouth and had a bit of a look over there, because with the amount of water coming down the Murray, that should be looking quite healthy at the moment. The building of this bridge, after uh, a lot of controversy with the secret women's business, as it was known back in those days, um, was taken to court and proven to be a fabrication. The bridge itself was completed in March 2001. One of the main attractions at Gulwa is the Old Wharf area, which is where we currently are at the moment. It's got a couple of eateries, and uh, as well as that, it's got the railway station where you catch the cockle train, and uh, there you can be part of the cockle train experience. The weather wasn't the best for it, but there was a market at the wharf today. On 
on our way to Horseshoe Bay here, we had to give way to that train, and that was one of the trains that run on the Cockle Train um, circuit, and uh, they do run steam locos, so to go on a steam loco, you would want to check the itinerary for the Cockle Trains, and make sure that you turn up on the, the day that a steam ranger train is running, if you wanted to go on steam. There's great coastal scenery lookout when you go up to the Horseshoe Bay shipwreck locations lookout and uh, once again on a nice day the water can be very blue. As we started to get closer and make our way into Victor Harbour the showers were continuing. Victor Harbour is lucky to have so many great lookouts around the coastal area that allow you to take in the spectacular views of the blue waters that surround the district. With the music festival that was on this weekend that we were unbeknowns of, not that that would have made any difference to our plans anyway, uh, getting a park in the area was almost impossible so whilst the rain kept hanging around we thought we'd go out to the bluff and uh, have a look from the lookout located up on the side of the bluff. Now looking across the uh, bay there at Victor Harbour with Victor Harbour to the left of town and straight out in front now is Granite Island. You can go up to the top of the bluff on a nice day and get a more elevated view from up there. As quick as the showers would move in, they would go and when you're looking in the right direction we're now sort of looking south, southwest here. Um, it turns the water from that khaki green colour to this nice blue aqua colour, and uh, it certainly makes for picturesque viewing. The inclement weather of the last couple of days and today certainly didn't stop the crowd from getting out and about and having a good look, so. Don't let the weather folks put you off. If you want to go out and do it, just go and do it. At this part of the day, the worst of the weather was well and truly behind us. We had more blue sky now than what we had uh, rain. So yeah, really starting to enjoy the day now. back in Victor Harbour and we thought we'd have a bit of a look at the newly developed area here uh, to go across the Granite Island. They've put up a new causeway bridge and uh, made it very nice for the horse to walk across. You can see the black section here, that's where the railway line is and gives a soft surface for the horse to uh, pull the cart across rather than walking on concrete. The old causeway bridge is being pulled down so no doubt given time all the old pylons etc will be removed. As we made our way back to the car to start to head home to Adelaide we had a look at the old car display here and this was all put on by the Old Enthusiast Car Club. If you like the video that you just watched, give us a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of our videos, hit the subscribe button. And once you've done that, tap on the bell and change the notification to all. That way every time we do uploads to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified.